to look at an attacking game by Mikhail Tao, played against the Sicilian defense. Uh, Tao was playing with the white pieces against Lubomir Ftachnik in uh, 1985, and um, the game went uh, into the main line of the Sicilian, and uh, against the Knight of Variation, Tao chose the Bishop E2 line, um, and Black transposed into Chevenin of Variation. And these are all the main the main line moves. Now white uh, prevents the expansion from black by b5. Uh, so instead black uh, plays pawn to b6 and he hopes to develop the bishop to b7 and put the pressure on the pawn on e4. And he wants to be flexible about where the knight's gonna go. It, it, he wants to maybe put it to d7 or to c6. He wants to keep those options open. And uh, Tal um, realized that omitting knight c6 move, which is the main line, instead um, gives up some of the control over the e5 square that black uh, really has to, to watch out for in this line. And, uh, and that allowed the break with the e5 move, which is very typical. Um, and here, uh, Tachnik maybe should have taken. Um, and uh, even though it's, it's very dangerous for black to accept the sacrifice because then his rook gets um, in trouble um, but instead of black just goes knight to d7 um, this all ends up in, the, in a fairly playable position um, instead of touching played uh, knight e8 and that keeps his knight rather passive and also allowed wise further expansion after the capture um, white plays pawn to f5 and the idea is that whether black takes or not, uh, white is fighting for the d5 square. So in the game, after knight d5, after the pawn to e5, Tal managed to put the knight on, on the important d5 square. And uh, from here, this knight uh, allows him to start the attack on the king side, even though the knight on d4 is hanging. Uh, but rather than waste time on... Uh, Moving this knight away, he just continues the attack with the f6 move, well, which threatens to capture on g7, open up the king, and uh, uh, cause black a lot of grief. So instead, uh, Ftashin decides to accept the sacrifice, and now uh, Tal uh, continues to centralize his pieces. Notice the importance of the king being already on h1, so there's no silly bishop c5 kind of pin. Um, so here the best chance for black was probably just to take on f6 good or bad and uh, in this position white has a tremendous attack he has all kinds of threats to second uh, bishop on h7 and then just to give checkmate on those um h and g files but black can hold on and um, and and this can be playable so i think this was the better option for tachnik instead he went knight to c6 and uh, that led to kind of a downfall uh, sorry so so there are threats there are threats with uh, bishop g5 maybe maybe bishop to d3 um, and and fashion figured that he's really being terrorized by this very very powerful knight on d5 and uh, he decided that uh, given the chance he should try to swap it out so he played uh, bishop g3 move which with a discovered attack uh, helps to exchange uh, a couple of pieces but uh, that doesn't really solve his problems so after bishop f3 still the pressure against the king side continues and um, and, and white's really de destroying this king side um, with g6 uh, he realizes that he has to give up an exchange but it would be a little bit uh, premature for, for White just to take on F8 because then he's kind of, his attack kind of peters out. Um, Black has some fairly active pieces and this is what often happens when you attack and you gain the material. Your attack slows down and your pieces, which were well placed for the attack, they're less so, um, they're less designed for you know, converting an advantage, and, and you had traded weaknesses in your position. The pawn on f6 is a, is, is a strength when you're attacking 
it's a weakness when you're um, you know trying to convert your material so so instead Tal just continues to build up the pressure he notices that the screen is a little uncoordinated you know and um, has to guard the knight and the knight itself was pinned and this knight is on the back rank so the rook isn't going anywhere so he just continues to build up pressure with this move and uh, queen c3 uh, continuing to defend the knight and also putting more uh, uh, attacking pieces on f6 now tal goes queen to h4 this is to free up the, the bishop i think and also to defend this pawn now it would be probably bad to take on f6 because well it just just wouldn't work let's say you take well then i take here and then i take here and now white's up an exchange for the for nothing basically so so instead um Tachnik should have probably played knight to d4 that seems like it's giving up a rook but um here he gives up an exchange under slightly better circumstances than in the previous line and here black's pieces are actually fairly well coordinated and white's pieces are a little loose and um yeah he said he went he went uh this should be seven but this allows uh well, well, this allows white to gain an exchange and also win the very important h7 pawn. And from here on, there's very little hope for black. Um, because even though he destroys the f6 pawn, white's attack continues and the black king is just completely open. And now there's no way to defend the f7 pawn. And once the f7 pawn falls, black's entire king side is devastated. And his king is still really badly placed in the center. So there's just no good news for Tachnik here. So white just picks up some, you know, remains of the white, of the black king side, and just takes another pawn. And and those are not just pawns, pawns. They're like, they're they're defenders of the black king, and and they're they they're getting swapped off the board now. And the king runs, but he can run, but he can't hide. I mean, now rook c4 is threatened, so he tries to cover it up, but just. Rook d1, and here Tashnik has had enough, and he just resigned because he's down on material. His king is getting trashed, and it's just. Yeah, I, I, I think White wants to play pawn to b4, so that if Black takes, he wants to play b4 and give some kind of, you know, mate here maybe. Like, like mate here is not far away, really. <laughs> so, so in view of all this, after Rook d1. Um, Tachnik resigned and uh, a very instructive game by Tal who showed that uh, sometimes initiative uh, in the Sicilian is much more important than material and and even though uh, in this position say he gives up a piece for no specific immediate uh, win or compensation just the, the strength of his pieces of and of his pawn and of sex really he, and, and the fact that all the black pieces are sitting on the back rank is really enough to compensate for a piece it takes some really intuitive, you know, intuitive gut, I would say. And that's, of course, something that Tal had more than most other chess players. Thanks for watching.